Lesson 10 The Source of Life Memory Text No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. John 1 verse 18 The Gospel of John is structured into four key parts. The Prologue the Book of Signs, the Book of Glory, and the Epilogue. Up to this point, our exploration has primarily concentrated on the Prologue and the Book of Signs, revealing the identity of Jesus through his miracles, conversations, and teachings. We are now turning our attention specifically to the third section, known as the Book of Glory. It's fascinating how the well-known seven I am statements create a connection between the Book of Signs and the Book of Glory. These statements include the bread of life, the light of the world, the door, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth and the life and the true vine. This week's lesson, we'll start by exploring the purpose of the farewell discourse, starting with the important moment when Jesus washed his disciples' feet. After that, we'll delve into the I Am statement, found in chapter 14, where Jesus declares, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I have given you an example. In Jesus' time, people typically wore sandals, or went barefoot, which meant their feet often got quite dusty, and dirty. It was customary for a servant or slave, to wash the feet of guests arriving for a meal. However, on the night of Jesus' final meal with his disciples before his arrest, there was no servant available, to perform this task. In John 13 verses 1 to 20, Jesus washes his disciples' feet during the Last Supper, demonstrating humility and servant leadership. Despite being their Lord, he performs a task reserved for the lowliest servant, teaching that true greatness lies in serving others. He tells his disciples to follow his example of love and humility. This act also symbolizes spiritual cleansing through his sacrifice on the cross and emphasizes the importance of unity, love, and selfless service among his followers. It is a profound lesson on the nature of discipleship and Christ-like living. Peter's response in John 13 verses 6-9 reveals both his reverence for Jesus and his struggle to understand. Initially, he objects, saying, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? He cannot accept his master, performing such a lowly task. When Jesus explains, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me, Peter overcorrects, asking Jesus to wash not just his feet, but his hands and head as well. This exchange highlights Peter's passion, but also his misunderstanding. Jesus teaches that spiritual cleansing is essential, and must be accepted humbly. Peter's response reminds us of the need to trust Jesus' ways, even when they challenge our expectations. I will certainly come again. John 14 verses 1 to 3 do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. These words were spoken by Jesus, 
during the Last Supper, shortly before his arrest and crucifixion. The disciples were troubled because Jesus had just told them that he would be leaving them soon and that Peter, one of their most devoted followers, would deny him three times. This revelation likely left the disciples feeling confused, anxious, and uncertain about the future. In this moment, Jesus sought to comfort his disciples and strengthen their faith. He reassured them that, despite his imminent departure, they should trust in him and in God. Jesus explained that his departure was purposeful. He was going to prepare a place for them in his father's house. Furthermore, he promised to return and take them to be with him, offering hope of eternal fellowship with him. This passage is full of assurance, hope, and trust, reminding believers that Jesus is preparing a place for them and that his ultimate goal is their eternal reunion with him. I am the way, the truth, and the life. In John 14 verses 5 to 6, Thomas expressed his confusion and asked Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus responded with a profound statement. I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, except through me. Thomas questioned Jesus about his destination, expressing uncertainty about the path. Jesus clarified that he himself is the way to God, embodying truth and life, and that salvation is possible only through him. In John 14 verses 7 to 11, Philip asked Jesus to show them the Father, saying, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus responded by explaining that anyone who has seen him has seen the Father, emphasizing the unity between himself and the Father. He said, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. He urged Philip and the others to believe in his words, and the works he performed, as evidence of this divine relationship. Philip misunderstood the connection between Jesus and the Father. Jesus clarified that he fully reveals the Father because of their intimate unity. He encouraged belief in his words and miraculous works as proof of his divine nature. I am the truth. John ties the concept of truth directly to Jesus in the following ways. John 1, 14 and 17 introduces Jesus as the Word made flesh, full of grace and truth. This highlights that truth is a defining characteristic of Jesus' nature. Verse 17 contrasts the law given through Moses with grace and truth that come through Jesus Christ, establishing him as the ultimate source and embodiment of divine truth, surpassing the law. In John 8 verse 32, Jesus tells his followers, You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Here, truth is not merely an abstract concept, but is tied to the person of Jesus, who frees people from sin and spiritual bondage. Knowing him as the truth leads to genuine freedom. John 14 verse 6 has Jesus directly identifying himself with truth, saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This statement emphasizes that Jesus is not just a bearer of truth, but the ultimate reality and source of truth guiding humanity to God. John 15 verse 26 has the promise of Jesus to send the Spirit of Truth from the Father to testify about Him. This shows that truth is a central aspect of Jesus' mission and identity, continuing through the work of the Holy Spirit, who reveals and glorifies Jesus as the truth. 
Through these passages, John consistently portrays Jesus as the living embodiment of truth, essential for salvation, freedom, and a relationship with God. Truth is not an abstract principle, but is inseparable from Jesus' person, teachings, and work. The Scriptures and the Truth in John 5 verses 38 to 40, Jesus tells the Jewish leaders that while they diligently study the scriptures, they fail to grasp their true purpose, pointing to him as the source of eternal life. They seek life in the text itself, but refuse to come to Jesus, the one the scriptures testify about. Jesus emphasizes that Scripture's ultimate goal is to lead people to faith in Him, not just knowledge or legalistic adherence. Jesus' words remind us that the Bible is not just a book of rules or information, but a revelation of God and His plan of salvation through Jesus Christ. A relationship with Jesus, rooted in faith, is essential to experiencing the life God offers. Without recognizing the scriptures as a means to that relationship, one can miss their true purpose. Elsewhere in Luke 24 verse 27, Jesus pointed to the scriptures to reveal the significance of his ministry. Because the scriptures served as the foundation of God's revealed truth. By showing how the law and the prophets pointed to him, Jesus affirmed the reliability and authority of the scriptures while unveiling their deeper meaning. This approach demonstrated that his life, death, and resurrection were not isolated events, but the fulfillment of God's plan foretold in scripture. It was important for his listeners, especially the disciples, to understand that faith in him was rooted in God's promises, giving their belief both scriptural and spiritual grounding. This connection deepened their understanding, strengthened their faith, and prepared them to proclaim the gospel to others. Luke 24 verse 27 and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them, in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Thank you for studying with us. We hope you give this video a like, and please subscribe. And always, keep the faith of Jesus.